Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to look at very interesting actuator from the T Motor company. It's quite powerful, it's not very expensive. It can use MIT Mini Cheetah controller. You will see what I mean. It has cross roller bearing and it should be perfect for the robot. For the fast robot. Let's look at it. As some of you know, I really fan of the quasi direct drive actuators. Quasi direct drive means that inside this actuator, in the gearbox, the reduction ratio is quite low, usually lower than 10. And often these actuators, they are not very expensive. At the same time, they are very fast and very agile. That's why most of the agile and fast robot dogs, they do use quasi direct drive actuators. And one of the company which produce this kind of actuators is T-Motor. I really love the actuators because they are lightweight and they use my favorite controller, MIT Mini Cheetah controller. I've already reviewed two actuators from this company, the small one and the intermediate one. They perform quite well. There are two things which can be improved in these actuators. And one of these things is the cross roller bearing at the output. And another thing, the possibility to measure the temperature of the motor. Because usually in the quasi direct drive actuators, the motor can get quite hot. So it's nice to have the possibility to check this temperature. I don't understand that cross roller bearing is quite expensive. Probably that's why they have not used it over here. But the motor company was kind enough to send me a new actuator. This one. This is AK109 actuator, second version. And this actuator does have the cross roller bearing at the output. Also, this actuator has the possibility to measure the temperature, so it has a temperature sensor inside the motor windings. And in addition to this, this actuator has the encoder at the output shaft. And also they've sent me this. This is a small adapter in order to connect this kind of actuators to your computer. So it's basically USB to CAN and USB to serial adapter. So let's unbox this actuator and see what is inside. And now the unboxing time. Oh, it's really well packed. And this is our actuator. This is the output shaft. So you can mount this actuator either from the back or from the front. Looks beautiful. There is a CAN bus connector and serial connector. And this heatsink cools the driver. There are one cable for serial, one cable for the CAN bus, one cable for the power. Comparing to the AK80, it's quite similar in terms of the diameter. It's significantly larger in terms of the heights. And it's heavier. Let's also look at the R-Link. This is R-Link version 2. There is a cable which goes to the actuator. USB cable, super short one. And the R-Link itself. USB connector. This is a connector which goes to the actuator. You see that there is a CAN and serial. By the way, you can buy all of this at the cubemars.com. This is a really nice small aluminum box. You can buy this actuator on the Cube Mars website. As you can see, it's not the cheapest one, but according to the specification, this should be the best one. And these are two actuators which I reviewed previously. And also over here you can find the R-Link. This is the actuator, we saw it already. So first of all, it has the cross roller bearing, as I told. It has a temperature sensor. It has the output encoder, so encoder on the output shaft. And it has a dual control mode, meaning that you can either control it as MIT Mini Cheetah controller, or you can control it as a servo motor. But you should be careful that when you control it in a servo mode, it does not mean that you control it as a hobby servo. So the PWM signal is not enough. So even in the servo mode, you need to control it through the CAN bus, which personally I prefer because CAN bus is quite fast and it gives you some feedback like the position, speed and stuff like this. And it has the planetary reducer as the previous actuators and this one has a reduction ratio of 9. This is the size. These are specifications, so you can apply the voltage between 24 and 48. With the previous actuators, it was only 24 volts. And the rated torque is 18 Newton meters. And the peak torque is up to 48 Newton meters, so it's quite powerful actuator. And on the page of the R-Link, apparently it's called Rubik Link. 
you can find the manual and also the software to control this actuator through this R-Link. By the way, this software and the R-Link itself you need only in order to set up your actuator. When you put all the parameters with which you are happy, you don't need to use it anymore and you can control your actuator through the canvas using either Arduino or Raspberry Pi or anything else. I have made the 3D printed mount for this actuator. And here I'm going to put one screw in order to easily see when the shaft is going to rotate. To run this actuator I would need the power. This is a 24 volts 5 amps power supply. And this is an Arduino Uno with the canvas shield. And also I have put two termination resistors over here. This is very important. If you don't know what is it, try to Google canvas shield. Let's see if I can use this actuator in MIT mode out of the box without configuring it with R-Link. I programmed the Arduino and over here on the canvas shield there is a small joystick with which I should be able to control this actuator. Let's switch it on for the very first time and see if it will work. Power to the actuator is on. So it seems like it works perfectly well without our link. Cool! And now it's time to try the R-Link. The R-Link goes to the computer and let's see if it's going to work. Ha ha ha. Let's start the Cube Mars tool. So this is a program with which you can put all the parameters for your actuator and also with this program you can run this actuator. First of all we need to put the English over here. Refresh. Connect to our port. It's connected. Let's look at the current. I would like to use MIT control. So I will put the KP5. KD I will put one. And let's go to the motor mode. Here we are. If I try to rotate, ah, it's difficult, it's too powerful for me. Yeah, it's too powerful. Let's go to the position one radian. Over here we can see the position, temperature and RPM. Let's go to the position 3. Let's go to the position 0. Minus 3. And plus 3. Yeah, the acceleration is quite violent. <laughs> and exit the motor mode. So as you can see it works. Let's try the servo mode. So for this we need to change the mode. I think it's somewhere here. Yes. Servo up. Waveform. Multi mode. Try to go to zero. Oh, Great. Let's do, I don't know, 100 degrees. It's quite nice and it's very silent in this mode. The advantage of the zero mode is that you can explicitly control the speed and acceleration. For example, here I increased both of them by the factor of 2. Let's go 360 and go back to zero. Cool. I have found some bug when you're using the servo control mode. Let me show you. So let's go to the multi mode. And now the position is zero. So let's go to this zero position. Let's push again this button. You see here it says that it's zero, but it went to another position. Let's keep pushing this button. You 
see this strange behavior even though the position is always zero. To solve this problem, I installed the latest firmware for this actuator. I followed the steps from the Cube Mars website. Let's go to the multi mode. Try to go to zero. One more time. One more. One more. Yeah, it seems like the update solved the issue. As the next step, I checked the backlash. For this, I have looked at the output shaft play. I did this in the both mode, in the zero mode and in the MIT mode. And in both this mode, the play was the same around 0.85 mm at my 20 cm long arm. And this backlash corresponds to the play of around 0.25 degrees. This corresponds to around 15 arc minutes. Next, the torque. According to the specification, the rated torque is 18 Newton meters, the peak torque is 48 Newton meters. But we need to check this. To measure the torque, I'm going to use this device. The main component is this electromagnetic brake. So you can control the current inside this electromagnetic brake. The higher the current, the more stronger it breaks. The actuator I have installed over here. So this is the output shaft, which will go to the input shaft of the brake. And this part will be fixed using this torque meter. It's not really a precise device, but it's good enough. So this is the servo mode. Let's increase the current to the 0 0.3. Go to 360. 18 Newton meters. Go to zero. 18 Newton meters. Let's set the brake to 0 0.4. And let's go to the position 180. Ah, uh, ah, uh, there were an error. Go to the position to zero. Yeah, there is some problem. The same behavior I saw in the MIT mode. And I was not able to go to the torque higher than 25 Newton meters. But I quickly found the problem and the problem was in the power supply. It was not able to provide enough current for this actuator. And when the torque was higher than 25 Newton meters, the current was too high and the voltage of the power supply dropped. As you can see here. So we can conclude that this actuator can easily handle its rated torque 80 Newton meters. And for the peak torque, I was not able to test it because I don't have the powerful enough power supply. This actuator allows to measure the position, velocity and torque and also temperature. For this, I'm controlling it in MIT mode using the Arduino. And let's see what kind of measurements we can take from it. This is a program which I'm using to take the data from the actuator. And here I'm printing the input position, output position, output velocity, output torque, output temperature and error. And this is the data. So the velocity is zero, torque is zero and temperature is 55. I think this temperature is not exactly in the degrees of centigrade. So you need to convert this temperature in real temperature. I don't know exactly how to do this, but I think it should be easy. So let's enable the actuator. And we can move it. And we see the data changing. Let's look at the serial plotter. Now I'm going to enable the actuator. And if we move it, Cool, it works. With this actuator, we can measure the torque. So this means that we can try to do the collision detection. And let's see how it's going to work. This is an Arduino program which I'm using. The main part of this code is over here. And here it stated that if the torque is higher than 0.6, the motor should be disabled. And here we can see the input position, the output position, the output speed and the output torque. And right now the output torque is zero. So let's enable the motor. 
And let's move it. So it moves no problem. And if there is something, it disables. So it moves without problem. And if there is an obstacle, it disabled. We can also do the gravity compensation to illustrate this. I have attached to this arm the weight of the two kilos. Right now the actuator is not powered and because of this weight it's not so easy to rotate this arm with one finger. So this is my special program for the Arduino and over here the most important line is this one. So here basically it states that the torque is proportional to the sign of the position, output position. And you need to adjust this constant and also this constant, arm position at the lowest point. So let's enable the motor. And now... Perfect! It works! Ha! As you have seen, we can do a lot of interesting stuff with this actuator in MIT mode. Unfortunately, I was not able to run this actuator in servo mode with Arduino through the canvas. But this is probably because of my limiting programming skills. Yeah. Overall, I really love this actuator. It's powerful, it has a lot of nice features and it's correctly priced for these features. It has quite significant backlash, but this is normal because it has a planetary gearbox and planetary gears with low backlash are usually quite expensive. Right now I have six different actuators from the T-Motor company with MIT Mini Cheetah controller and I can try to build a robot arm with them. But this is for the future. I would really appreciate if you can subscribe to my channel and put the like to this video. This will help to grow my channel. And I would like to say a huge thank you to people who support me via Patreon or via YouTube channel membership. Here's the name. Thanks to these people this channel survives. As usual. Stay safe, good luck with your projects and see you next time. Yay!